Red cabbages are known to be anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, great for the cardiovascular system, great for the immune system, and some scientists even suggest that it can kill cancer cells already present in the body. I don't think I've ever eaten a red cabbage in my entire life. And that's why today, we're still not gonna be eating red cabbage, but we're gonna be looking at one of the powerful antioxidants within red cabbage that give it some of these properties. Anthocyanin is one of the compounds within red cabbage that gives it its pigmentation. Now, anthocyanin is very unstable when it comes to light, temperature, pH, and storage. But if we can take the anthocyanin out of the red cabbage, then we can investigate how it could be used as a pH indicator. Anthocyanin is the molecule that's going to be observed and it has a very unique structure. It has many conjugated pi bonds as seen in this structure, and the purple color is indicated by a neutral pH of about seven. When a base is added to the solution with anthocyanin, the base can rip off a hydrogen from it and create an additional pi bond. This effectively creates an extended conjugated pi system. When acids are added, the resulting molecule has a shorter conjugated pi system. The homo-lumo gap describes the difference in energy it takes from one electron from the highest occupied molecular orbital to excite to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. As pi bonds increase, this energy decreases. As the electron falls back to ground state, it emits a photon that is perceived. Okay, so for the experiment, we're gonna need a couple of materials. Um, the first main ingredient we need is red cabbage or purple cabbage. Um, I got mine at approximately two pounds after a conversion factor because I don't have a mass scale. It comes out to about 907 grams. Um, we need two 150 milliliter beakers, one 500 milliliter beaker, one funnel, um, coffee filter paper. I didn't have actual filter paper, so we're just going to have to settle with coffee filter paper. Um, four test tubes for the final test, um, indicating pH. Um, we're going to need 6% acetic acid or just cleaning vinegar. Uh, we need 6% bleach, and we also need sodium bicarbonate as the testing factors. The first step of our procedure is we're gonna preheat a pot to boiling with water. We are going to cut the red cabbage into little bits, and we're gonna put it in the water and let it sit there for about 30 minutes. We're next gonna let it cool to room temperature, and after doing that, we're gonna strain the large bits of cabbage and then we're gonna take the water that was in the pot and we are going to funnel it into a 500 ml beaker. This beaker will then be placed in an ice bath and filtered through a coffee paper filter with cold water. Um, next, we're gonna take that water, we're gonna put it back in the pot and we are gonna let it sit there for about 30 minutes on low heat to evaporate the water and then we will have a concentrated amount of anthocyanin that can be placed in each of these four test tubes, about 25 mLs of each. And then after that, we can take our 6% uh, desired uh, household cleaning products and put them into each of the test tubes. For the household cleaning products, we'll use about two to three drops of each because they are extremely powerful. And after that, we will analyze the results. Okay, so don't forget to put on your lab goggles and your lab coat, and here you see me cutting the red cabbage. It's going all well and good so far. Okay, so the hot water is breaking down the cell walls of the red cabbage such that the anthocyanin can actually get out into the water now. So you'll see the water getting even more purple as time goes on. So this is the solution after about 30 minutes, um, as you can see. It's pretty purple now, and a lot of the color has been drained out of the cabbage. Um, we're gonna turn the heat off and we are going to let it cool down. So what we're doing here is we're just doing a rough filtration of all of the hard, large parts of the plant that didn't quite make it into the water. Um, we're not exactly looking at nonpolar and polar groups yet, but it can be assumed that the nonpolar groups are actually still on the filter and they aren't dissolving in the water. Um, as we keep going, you'll see that if you squeeze the, um, the, the red cabbage a little bit more, more liquid will come out, and we're just trying to get as much of that anthocyanin as possible. 
So at this point, we're almost done with the rough filtration. Um, we're going to be putting it in the ice bath soon. And the goal of the ice bath is to cool down the entire solution so that the semi-polar groups that don't quite dissolve in water are going to precipitate out. And in doing so, we can filtrate it one more time with a coffee filter to make sure that only the very polar groups like anthocyanin and other extremely polar groups are going to be in the solution still. So if you remember anthocyanin structure, it has a lot of hydroxyl groups on it, meaning that it's able to hydrogen bomb with water really easily. But other impurities inside of the solution that can't quite deform these hydrogen bonds are going to solid precipitate out when it's cooled. So after cooling it, we're making sure that all of the nonpolar or relatively polar compounds that have come out um, during the cooling have precipitated, and here they are on the filter paper. So you can see it's quite a lot. Unfortunately, we don't have the tools to filter this any further, as all of the compounds now are incredibly polar, so we just have to work with what we have. So after reheating the solution, we started with 500 mLs and we ended with about 400 mLs. Um, so we are just going to pour about 25 mLs to about 50 in here. There's going to be some leftover liquid. That's okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. That nice. Okay, now is the moment of truth. We're going to do bleach first. So let's go ahead and open this up. We're just going to take a few drops of bleach and see if it does anything. Remember, this is basic, so it should turn a bluish color from the purple, but we'll have to find out. Let's see if that does anything. It just looks black. It's actually kind of funny. Okay, let's just dip a little bit more in. Okay, okay. I'm actually wondering what's going on here. Ooh, did you see that? Did you see that? That is so cool. So it actually turned yellow, my bad. It turns yellow. You see this? Okay, so for our next part, we're going to be turning the acetic acid one into, I think red is the color, so we'll find out. So I have right here some acetic acid. I'm going to take a couple drops. Pour it in. So remember, acetic acid is quite, well, it's not that acidic, but it's still acidic. So I'm hoping that, oh, you can already see a little bit of a change here. I'm going to put a little bit more. I want to get a dark red look. So, let's keep going. Keep going. This isn't very concentrated um, acetic acid, so it's going to take quite a bit here. See, it's turning like a almost like a dark red. Okay, so for our last one, we're just going to be using like a teaspoon of um, sodium bicarbonate. Um, we know that the Literature value of sodium bicarbonate is about 7.3 pH, um, maybe a little bit more than that, but um, it's just a little bit basic. So I don't expect to see much of a change, but there should be just a little bit of color change. Yeah, so So you can see the solution is a little blue here. That's because sodium bicarbonate isn't that strong of a base. So this was a really, really cool experiment. We got to see how anthocyanin was able to change colors based on whether or not an acid or base was placed in. Um, taking an example for the 6% bleach solution, I didn't expect it to turn yellow. I expected it to turn more like the sodium bicarbonate solution, like a deep green. But the more I'm reading up on it, the more I realize that the more basic you turn anthocyanin into, or the more basic of a solution you place in it, the more yellow it gets, the more yellow slash green. And I think that bleach was so basic that it turned the pH of this to at least 12, 11, 12 ish in that range. So um, my analysis of this would be that um, a lot of the anthocyanin was able to have more con extended, extended conjugated pi bonds. Um, there was more base that was able to pull that hydrogen off on both of the oxygens so that there was an even more um, 
even more pi bonds available for lower energy. Um, let's take, for example, the acetic acid it turned red. That was expected. We have hydrogens being donated to the anthocyanin, which um, in turn decreases the amount of pi bonds, um, the, it decreases the extended conjugated pi bond system. Uh, sodium bicarbonate, unique, different from the bleach, even though they're both basic. This was um, probably about a pH of seven or eight in here now. Um, it turns about a deep green color. Probably not, not as much as the anthocyanin dye was able to um, change into its unprotonated form. And of course, for the last one, we have our control. We didn't add anything to it. It's just this deep purple. And actually the purple is from the pH of the water that was added, and that is about seven. So you can see this is about a pH of seven in here. So if you wanna just zoom up on all of these, it goes bleach, acetic acid, sodium bicarbonate, and the control.